It seems like every single international break, the stories of Paul Pogba being unhappy and wanting to leave Manchester United resurfaced. This time, it's thanks to Didier Deschamps after he questioned why Pogba could be happy at United. In the previous window, it was Pogba flirting with the move to Real Madrid. Go further back, I think it was when he was on a pre-season tour, when he was in Asia, and he was flirting with the move again. It happens every single international break. And my question is, at what point does it reach a turning point where you have to really ask the question of whether or not United and Pogba are the best match together? That's what I want to do in this video. I want to run through and explain everything. So don't just jump on it now. Leave a comment now without watching the video and listening to what I've got to say from both points of view. So make sure you subscribe to United People's TV before you watch the video. Let's talk about Pogba. And before I do continue, I want to shout out to One Football for sponsoring this video and helping United People's TV. If you haven't downloaded it already, follow the link in the description. It's free to download. You can get all the latest Pogba news, all the latest Pogba stats, all the latest United news, and all the latest United stats in and around the match days. So make sure you follow the link in the description. It helps United People's TV if you download it. But let's talk a bit more about Pogba. So, Paul Pogba. I don't think he's happy at United right now, and understandably so. Look at the football we're playing. One week doing that against PSG, where it was Pogba's assist with his cameo that laid it on, the, laid it on for Marcus Rashford, who buried it away. And then you've got Arsenal, and you've got Istanbul. Of course, Pogba's not happy with the football. I'm not happy. You're not happy with the football. So I think he's absolutely justified in that sense to be unhappy. But I also think that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and his management of Pogba... I think he's got it right this season. I think Paul, look, he was left on the bench for PSG. He was left on the bench a couple of times. It, it went to show United players and United fans that Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wasn't really just going to have anybody in the team simply because they were a name. And I think he's done that before. But Popper got dropped. He came on as cameos. PSG particularly came on and really influenced the game massively. Brilliant. That's what you want to see from Paul Pogba. But a question that we all have to ask ourselves here is, why is there always such a hyper-focus on Paul Pogba? Why is everything that Pogba does scrutinised more than others? And the simple truth is because it's Paul Pogba. If it was Scott McTominay, no one would really care that much because everybody knows what McTominay's ceiling is as a player. And everybody also knows what Paul Pogba's standards are. And his ceiling as a player is a World Cup winner, for crying out loud. Him at Juventus, he was unstoppable. So because of the standards that Pogba has set himself, if Pogba had gone through his whole career and been a particularly average midfielder, nobody would really care that much. But he hasn't. And because of that, he's held to a higher standard than other players. And I think that's the right thing to do. And something that hasn't really helped Pogba in that sense this season is Bruno Fernandes. Now, before I start there talking about Bruno, I want to quash the idea that, that Pogba and Bruno can't play in the same team together. That's ridiculous. Pogba's won the World Cup. He didn't win that by playing alongside 10 crap players, so he stood out. No, he fit in that team alongside Kante. He played in a deeper role, deeper playmaking role, and showed that he can do it. And I think he can do it at United as well, and I think he has done it. He hasn't been horrendous this season, but he's certainly not being the level that we all expect Pogba to be, because Pogba, as an individual name, gets into most starting 11s in the world. But on form, on judgment, comparison to other players' form, that's where he falls short. And Bruno Fernandes, that's what I mean, that's what I mean when I said it, he's made it difficult for him, because Bruno's now set the bar at United. Bruno is the standard setter, the tempo setter, the main man, the most talked about man. And it's not Paul Pogba anymore. But Pop has shown that form before. It's not as if he's been shit since he's rejoined 2016. He's not done anything. Just sell him. Scoring in the Europa League final. 13 goals and 9 assists I think he got in the 18-19 season. His first three months under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Individual performances. Some great cameos. Influencing games on the bench. There's plenty that Pogba has got right. But Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's midfield... He doesn't know how to fit everybody in and where to fit everybody in. 
And that means that Pogba sometimes is getting left on the bench and sometimes coming on and playing left wing or sometimes starting as a left central midfielder or a right central midfielder or as part of a double pivot. You can understand the frustrations when you think about that. Changing 11s, changing formations, changing positions, changing styles and changing tactics, it makes it difficult for any player. Now, Paul Pogba didn't have a pre-season just like any other player, but he also had coronavirus. And in that sense, you, you have to cut a little bit of slack. Surely you do. I've had coronavirus. It knocks you out. I'm not even an athlete. I was just walking around my living room, let alone trying to chase a ball around a pitch for 90 minutes where you've got to run like 8 to 10 kilometres in an hour and a half. I think in that sense, you have to cut him slack. But the reason I'm doing this video is because I don't think the question can really be ignored anymore. I think the fact that year on year, summer on summer, transfer window on transfer window, the same things happen. And it's not as if Paul Pogba couldn't stop them. And again, Bruno Fernandes is the example here. Bruno Fernandes was not happy with the rumours that were being spread around about his relationship with Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in the dressing room. He spoke about it on camera, said, that's bullshit, that's not the truth, that's unfair on the manager, stop it. And they stopped. Paul Pogba, if he wanted to, has had and will have more opportunities to simply go to the press, I'm happy at United. All these rumours, they're bollocks. I'm staying, end of question. But he's not happy. He's happy for the rumours to continue because it's probably him being advised to do that by his agents, who I think is still Minerola. I'm not sure. He was a man who brought him to United in the first place. And I think that decision by Pogba just to like sit back and let it all happen and not really say anything to stop it doesn't really help his relationship with the United fans because, we, because we've seen it there with, with Bruno the player with the right mindset will make that decision to stop the rumours but when the rumours benefit the long term value or the long term project or whatever Pogba is he's choosing that over over stopping the rumours, over making it a happier situation at United. And I think this is the issue, man. When I start talking about Pogba, I can list off a good few reasons as to why you shouldn't be speaking about him. But at the same time, the more you think about it, there's more questions that you can fairly ask. And that's why I think it's such a debate among United fans. Because there is evidence for and against in equal abundance. I don't think either side really has a better argument to sell or to keep. But Paul Pogba, he still is one of the best central midfielders in the world and he's not exactly massively old. He's got a good few years ahead of him. And I want to see him do that in a United shirt. And I have seen him do that sort of level of performance in a United shirt. But we haven't seen it enough to justify the idea that Paul, Pog Paul Pogba still remains one of the best central midfielders in the world. The talent, oh, he's there. The talent is there. And it comes out and it goes away. And it comes out and it goes away. And Paul Pogba's lack of consistency maybe is reflective of the lack of consistency that Manchester United has as a football team as a whole. But I really want to know where you stand on Pogba. It feels like a repetitive conversation. It feels like we've had this conversation before. But as things develop, so does the conversation. So I want to know what you think about Pogba in the comments below. Do you think United really should be considering selling Paul Pogba now? Or am I dumb for even suggesting the idea? We should still be building our midfield around Pogba, around Bruno Fernandes, and maybe Fred. I don't know. I really genuinely don't know. But the fact that the last three summers you can come into the season and have this same conversation, it's a pattern that keeps repeating itself. And at some point, you have to question why that does keep repeating itself and whether or not United may be better off. I think on paper, United would be better off if we sold Paul Pogba and reinvested that money properly. But it would probably be like what happened after Ronaldo left and we replaced him with Obertan and Owen. So in that sense, hell no, don't ever get rid of Pogba. But let me know where you stand on this, really. Don't want to put my opinion on it too much. I want to know what you think. So let me know in the, in the comments below about Paul Pogba. Do you think United really should be considering selling him or is this nothing more than the media pressure designed to derail Paul Pogba as a United player? Let me know exactly where you stand in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to United People's TV if you're new.